For the internet to remain stable, we have to maintain unique addresses on the network. So there has to be a mechanism that is in place that makes sure that we are not duplicating our addresses that are going to be seen on the internet. Now, originally, this was something that the internic was handling. However, the internic does not exist anymore, and so IANA is the one who handles this. Now, IANA is the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, and they are uh, under the umbrella of the ISOC, and they delegate the registration of their address space or of the IPv4 and IPv6 address space to certain registrars. So if you wanted to obtain an IP address, what would you do? Well, you'd probably contact your internet service provider and that would be a good start. But where does your internet service provider get their address space allocations? Well, for that, they've got to go to a registrar. And the registrars are going to be based on geographic locations. So if you're in the United States, you're going to go with the registrar known as Aaron. If you are going to Aaron, which stands for the American Registry for Internet Numbers, then they are going to allocate an address space to you if it's available. And then from that chunk, you can go ahead and allocate address space to your customers, and that's how your internet service providers do it. Now, those registrars include AFRINIC, which is the African Network Information Center. They are what's known as a RIR, or a Regional Internet Registry, in Africa. We have APNIC, which is the Asia Pacific Network Information Center. We have ARIN in the United States. We have LACNIC, which is the Latin American and Caribbean Network Information Center. And we have RIPE NCC, which is the Network Coordination Center in the European area. Each of these receives their allocation directly from IANA, and then they in turn can allocate to internet service providers. These would be regional internet registrars. While it's true that we have to have unique address space on the internet. There are certain addresses that are allocated for that, known as public addresses, and there are some addresses that are allocated for private use. Within the Class A address space, anything that is addressed 1.0.0.0 to 9.255.255.255 and then 11.0.0.0 through 126.255.255.255 would be considered a public address and to be able to use this address on the internet you would have to have that address allocated to you by a registrar. In the class B address space you're going to find anything from 128.0.0.0 through 172.15.255.255 and then it's going to jump to 172.32.0.0 through 191.255.255.255. Class C address space will be 192.0.0.0 through 192.167.255.255. And from there, it's going to jump to 192.169.0.0 through 223.255.255.255. Class D address space that's used for multicast groups will be 224.0.0.0 all the way through 239.255.255.255. These addresses are known as public addresses. Now, RFC 1918 defines address allocations for private use. This RFC helps to extend the life of IP version 4. Instead of having to allocate address space for every device inside of an organization, you can use private IP address space and then a process known as network address translation to translate these internal addresses to a public usable address. For devices that do not need to access the internet, no NAT translation needs to be created. The address space defined in RFC 1918 that is for private use in a Class A 
range would be 10.0.0.0 through 10.255.255.255. In a class B address space, 172.16.0.0 through 172.31.255.255 would be considered a private IP address space. And then finally in class C, 192.168.0.0 through 192.168.255.255 would also be considered private.